My name is Roy and I'm your friend and I'm coming today to you from uh, a, a chilly summer day, June 13th in uh, Apavia Ministries in Romania. would like to speak to you for a few minutes today about the incredible power that God has given to every living human being that's distinct from the power of any other living organism. You remember in Genesis, God said, oh, let us create man in our image and after our likeness. And I suggest that one of those ways is the power of cognitive speaking. You remember that uh, God said, God said, God said, everything that God made in the book of Genesis, it was prefaced by, and God said. And everything that God said happened, be it um, a, a water divided from the dry land or let there be light, whatever it was, God's words have incredible power. So much so that the Bible says that everything God says and he sends out his word, it comes back having accomplished that for which it was sent. Now, how much power do the words of human beings have. Well, Proverbs gives us an indication of that by telling us that the power of death and life are in the tongue. Well, how can that be, Roy? Well, you think of a father who says to his young, vulnerable daughter, I'm sorry you were born. You're a pain in the neck. Uh, I wish you would just disappear. And uh, I just don't like you. Now, he didn't hit her but he sure beat her with words. And those words will affect her probably for the rest of her life in some way. You think conversely of another father who says to his daughter, I love you. You're an answer to my prayer. I uh, will always be behind you. I believe in you. I believe in your potential. And whatever happens, you know that daddy will be there for you because I just love you. What a difference it makes by just speaking words. I think of a man who was born in Austria, and he was just an ordinary kind of guy, uh, I guess, but he had some thoughts. He had some ideas. He began to write them down, and he began to speak them. I don't think he ever flew a plane or drove a tank, but he sure had ideas, and he sure understood the power of speaking words and he spoke and he spoke and he spoke he made speeches he influenced people by the words and the ideas that he had and uh, gradually this man became a powerful leader in the nation of Germany and he took a nation of wonderful good uh, intelligent people who make Mercedes and BMW and Audi uh, automobiles made murders out of them, actually killed and slaughtered millions of people because of one man with some ideas and he understood the power of words. On the other side of the English Channel, there was another man who understood the power of words he was a chunky sort of man with a stovepipe hat and a cigar chomping uh, um, attitude and uh, loved a uh, glass of whiskey once in a while, I understand. But he also understood the power of words. And when the Luftwaffe was bombing his nation, uh, London, the surrounding areas, uh, <clears throat> other nations would have perhaps surrendered or given in. But this one man who understood the power of words got on that radio and said something like this. We'll fight him in the air. We'll fight him on the sea. We'll fight him in the landing grounds. We'll fight him in the beaches. But we will never surrender. We will never surrender. And of course, we know that man to be Winston Churchill, who by the power of words gave people faith and courage 
to persevere and eventually brought them uh, to victory. There was another man about the same time who was born who also understood the power of words. Why am I saying this? Because you have the power of words. You have the same ability. God has put within you the power of words. This third man of whom I speak uh, understood the power of words, skinny kind of guy, tall, went to study some ideas, some concepts that we understand as Christianity. And he began to speak and speak, and, and the crowd, small, medium, large, but he began to speak with authority, with conviction, because he really believed what he was saying. And with the power of words, multitudes were transformed into a new life in Jesus Christ because Billy Graham lived, and he still does. You have power of words, and it doesn't depend on whether you have it or not. You do. It depends on whether you understand what you have and how you use it. As a teenager, I was very interested in cars in New York City, and uh, we had uh, the muscle cars, we call them, all the Mustang with the uh, uh, 287 uh, supercharged engine, I think, or the Oldsmobile, I think it was the 440, or the Pontiac Grand Prix or Grand Am. Oh, we used to love to uh, watch them as they lined up on some uh, back street someplace and they took off tires squealing to see who was the fastest. Great engines, loud engines, supercharged engines. But those cars would have gone nowhere with just an engine. They needed a transmission whereby the power of the engine was put into the wheels and produced action. When you understand, when we understand the incredible power that God has given to us as human beings, and we use that power for him, for good, then in some way we'll change the world by changing the people close to us, closest to us, by how we speak. And you have that power. God bless you. My name is Roy, and I'm your friend. Have a great day. Goodbye.